Welcome back to some professional StarCraft 2. Let me introduce the red Protoss player on the bottom left of Ancient Cistern. It is the hero we need right now. The smiling assassin, the rank one Protoss in the world. Up against a worthy opponent. A challenger. In fact, possibly the most difficult challenger. The final boss of StarCraft 2. It is dark. He just seems to get in your head and live there rent for it. In fact, I would be surprised if he didn't take up residence in your head and start charging you for it. That's how well he seems to know his opponents and know how to win in StarCraft 2. And if you enjoy watching great games, hopefully you'll enjoy smashing the like button and possibly even, if you feel it worthy, subscribe. For this is the semifinals of the Korean StarCraft League, a best of three battle. Check out the description for this community run and supported league. I've uh, been pumping out the incredible games, and I'm glad to bring you some more of them. And Jimmy, how many times? Every time. Right, at this point, they're gonna. The drinking game is already off to an inauspicious start. Protoss versus Zerg, but I I think we I'd be more accurate in describing this as Protoss versus Dark, as it just seems like it's a different matchup entirely. Every matchup with Dark, or even ZVZ, as we saw recently, Dark just has this effect. It's hard to really. Do, it's an intangible, but well, first Oracle comes out, he just knows. Even when he loses, it feels like he does it on his own terms. But to kick things off, Hero has already kind of taken control of the situation. He opted for a Phoenix first to take out the Overlords and followed it up with an Oracle to protect his third. Dark built a whole bunch of Zerglings, but Hero is prepared. Oh, Zerglings. Oh, no! He got a little more surface area on those Adepts than he may have wanted. Oracle lights up, uses its last few bits of energy. Drains them to slow down the links and will do so successfully. Dark is not ready to stop there. 16 more Zerglings in the production tap. Just continuing that onslaught. He's only got 32 drones back at home. It feels like Dark is quite committed to this idea. And with the Phoenix first, a hero doesn't have as many oracles or as much energy to defend. There's only a single Adept at the Natural. He sees that the third base is well defended, but there's no battery at the Natural right now. Two more Adepts are warped in. Into the main, the Oracle. Gonna look for some more damage. Queens will drive it away after only two drone kills. Phoenix continually inconveniencing these Obies. May actually kill another. A third Phoenix kill is dark. Clearly looking the other way. The Queen's not there to save it. Now there's charge on the way. So Doc, not able to find the damage he was looking for, will be pushed back. And now Hero is able to consolidate his third. He has plenty of probes at 57 to 51 drones. Melee attack is on the way for Dark, but it's matched by plus one ground weapons for Hero. The Phoenix has gotten more than enough damage to justify its presence and of course continued scouting information. The one thing Dark has going for him is a relatively quick fourth base. He kind of reached out there and took it before there was any chance of contesting it. Picks up a queen immediate. Put her down! Ah! How many times do we tell you we can't fly anymore, Karen? Shut up, Brenda! I know. Still, though, the queen's out of position. That means nine drone kills from the oracles here. Hero, in the past, has had some issues with keeping uh, adepts and, and other units to block the wall with the natural, but so far, diligent and well defended. And will not take any untoward damage from the Zerglings. So things shaping up nicely for Hero here in game one. As Dark is unable to get the damage he wanted to do, clearly, and is, is forced into lair tech on... on Less than stellar economic footing. 
Meanwhile, Hero feels like he has so much space, he's going to go ahead and get everything. Uh, Robotics Bay, Templar Archives, plus one. Warp Prism, plus one air weapons. Is this a bait? Is he trying... Hero. He lets any units in. I think this is a fake. He's upgrading this in order to... If Dark scouts it, he'll see the Cybercore upgrading and think that means a uh, fleet beacon switch. Or, you know, it could just be for a fleet beacon switch, in which case, Dark would be right if he thought that. <laughs> Either way, preemptive upgrades into carriers. Very likely carriers. Occasionally, it's carriers. It's, it's carriers. Dark has now 150 supply, but he's sinking it into roaches, which are not the most supply-efficient units. They're just all about overwhelming your opponent. Very zerg. It's going to be Ravager, or Roach Ravager Ling Bane, it looks like. As Hero has kind of started the clock on carriers. With the Fleet Beacon on the way, Disruptors, he wants to skip, essentially, that mid-game ground battle and go straight into the late game sky toss and so far he's kind of pulled the wool over over dark's eyes it looks very much like he's going to do this sort of twilight council oriented mid game but we know via the production tab that that isn't going to be the end of it though go yeah though it looks like hero with a single stargate not going to be pumping out a ton of carriers just going to increment them out trying to hold the line the Oracles will help ward away reinforcements. A handful of Banelings in the center. A bit of an awkward fight, but he spots the Disruptor here. Yeah, Hero is building the Death Ball one unit at a time. I mean, with literal Death Balls as well. Interesting way to hold the natural. With a Disruptor in the wall. Well, here come a bunch more units. One Disruptor with the army. Holds. Keeps his powder dry. <laughs> Yeah, the, the only issue is now, well, I guess he's stuck with the cannon. A Zergling gets in. In another awkward engagement, a single carrier not gonna- Oh, obliterates the probes in dark. Walks into the third and walks out with a whole bunch of probe kills. Disruptor in the wall. Just blasts away some of the defending units, but it's cr obviously creating some issues here. A bit of a traffic jam. He's stuck between. There is a warp prism up to the north side. I don't know if Hero's forgotten about this. More Banelings rolling in. They don't have plus two yet, though clearly still an existential threat to the probes. The way that Dark has to... Oh my god. A, a shotgun spread of disruptor shots. But more Banelings rolling into the natural. The Zealots try to hold the wall. And they will. But at what cost? Dark is on every side. He's got a spire on the way. Looking to knock the carriers and the oracles out of the sky with some Corruptors, maybe even Mutas, since it's only one carrier right now. More Disruptor shots, trying to hit more Zerg than Protoss, and so far doing a pretty good job of it. Oh, a messy game, but Dark, he has 81 drones. He's lost most of his standing army here, doing damage to Hero's economy, but Hero's economy is still very much intact, sitting on 68 and counting probes. That Warp Prism still unused as everything has been warped in on defense. Now the Spire is done, but Dark doesn't have that much money in the bank. He's rebuilding the ground army in order to compete with most of Hero's ground army as, as the carriers, what are they, two carriers? One carrier, building two and three right now. But he's kind of just shrugging it off. It adds damage to the army, but it's overall the DPS, not really so much for Roaches to deal with. Once the number increases, of course, so does that number. Banelings with plus two rolling in. Four kills. More Banelings to the natural. He's zoning, but he breaks down the wall with the veins. He's used so many units here. Combined with the disruptors, and here comes Dark again. Zerglings into the four. Always finding the weaknesses. Corruptors are being built, and Hero consistently building up the carrier count. He's up to three. You must respect him. It kind of feels like Hero. He's eight, well, he's starting plus three air weapons on a cyber core with 100 HP. It, it feels like Hero's trying to bait Dark to overreact. 
there's so many times where we see a Zerg player kind of tilt way too far in the other direction and build so many Corruptors and so much anti-air, the ground army just sweeps the field. If you commit 40 supply to Corruptors, then to counter three carriers, there's a very real chance that the ground army of Archons and Charge Lots and Disruptors can win the day. But so far, Dark, stalled out by a couple stasis wards, make that three. Still not enough to stop all this. Here there come the Corruptors with the Roach laying for cover, but the Archons hit Roaches and Corruptors alive. Walking through the stasis lings here. More banelings looking for an opportunity, but Hero holds the line. Great positioning. Ah, 14 probes went down, unfortunately. And that leaves Hero at 63, a precarious number. Zerglings kill another Raptor. There's nothing in the wall. More Zerglings into the main. Does he have any cannons there? He does not. Is there a hive? No, no adrenal glands is what that means most importantly. But Dark continues finding damage as the Zerglings came out of stasis and ran right into his base. More Corruptors, Hive Tech, but Hero, it feels like he's got the best army he's gonna put together, and now, it's time to move out. All right. Looks like there was a quick pause, but we don't wait for anyone here. Are you ready to go? Hero says yes. Dark says I was born ready. Uh, something of a base trade. Recalls to the third. Shield battery overcharged. Thankfully, no bane links for Hero. The natural as well. Going to, well, wow, there are so many Zerglings. Thankfully, no adrenal glands. Disruptors. Those zealots holding the line. Though slowly and surely getting overrun. Disruptor takes out a chunk. Whole lot of damage being done. Just a couple zealots. 20 probes. 20 as well as 20 drones. Workers being slaughtered on either side. Archons every which way. The main base, the Zerglings not targeting probes, and the Zealots are going to be war warped in just in time to save the day. Oh, a little bit of a mistake there. Dark had an opportunity to kill probably a dozen more probes. Both sides taking big economic hits, but able to stabilize just in time. Dark at 60 workers. Hero sitting at 50. Archons, though. The army supply for Hero is overwhelming, and the carriers have arrived. There are 15 Corruptors against just five carriers, but a dozen Archons complementing the ground army. And even a couple of those are more than enough to ward off the Corruptors. And we may find ourselves in that scenario. Will the Zerglings find... A Templar, they find one of the Archons into the third. Dark realizes he can't pick a fight right now. He, he goes the other direction, finding another Archon. A surprising amount of Archons dying to Zerglings. There aren't that many we left with the army. It looks like Dark is ready to go. He splits and tries to target down the carriers, but he's not even going to bother. The Archons have power overwhelming, and the carriers are enough. Just that backbone of carriers to power through. Not going for Sky Toss, but adding carriers in as a late game option. Dark did a lot of damage in typical Dark fashion, getting in places he shouldn't be. But Hero stabilized enough to carry it through. And Hero takes game one. It wasn't easy, but it was effective. Game two. Altitude. A great game. Really, both players on the edge of their ability there. Dark at continually poking and prodding for weakness. But as, as we've seen in the past, when Dark loses in a high-powered game, it usually is because of overextending himself. He stretches his neck out a little too far. And uh, down comes the axe. And that is exactly what we saw there. It's just, he constantly, it may have felt like Dark had a lot of units, but it, he was constantly half a step to a full step behind in tech. He was dealing with carriers with no anti-air. He was dealing with Archon Disruptor with roaches and lings, which at some point quality does supersede quantity. Though I'd argue both are true when you like and subscribe.
Thank you for watching. All right. Game two. What are we going to see? No proxy hatches, no shenanigans here. The Archons just crushing it. Hero doing a good job of keeping his priorities straight in that game. Dark has a tendency to get you to commit too many of the wrong units to the wrong place at the wrong time. If Hero had, for some reason, kept most of his Archons at home to defend the counterattack, it very well might have. But that would have exposed his carriers to the Corruptors. And the one advantage that Hero had was the strength of his army when combined together. So, heading in to game two, I think Dark... I mean, I don't think he's going to change anything up. I think he, he... Interestingly, the Phoenix ended up being a big part of it. Where usually you'd have Moracles in the early game. The Phoenix denying the Overlords kind of baiting Dark into going for a big Zergling attack, where still with units behind here was able to defend. Stargate is the choice yet again, as it so often is. Just gives you everything you need. You need to scout, your units can fly. You need to deal with deny scouting, Phoenixes. You need pretty much anything else, Oracles. Both scouting and potential damage and defense. Adept shades into the main. Sees the drone count, the gas. Uh, looks for any tech. Sees the queen. What more can you ask for? Same thing again. And just going to continue before speed finishes dark with a little bit of a later speed. As he wanted to get that third hatch up a little bit quicker. Second Adept, finding its way across. Two Adepts together, much more dangerous, as they can one-shot Zerglings and drones, but this is the continued back and forth, kind of like Reapers in the early game of Terran vs. Zerg. You just kind of flirt with the Queens for a while, and see what you can get. It's going to be just straight into oracles in game two. A more typical fashion. Good oracle micro gets three drones. Though the queens will angrily chip away at the HP. I say angrily. I'm not anthropomorphizing. Uh, it's, it's clearly angry. Queens are very angry units. It's just how they are. Third base left kind of undefended here. Easily picks off a drone. Make that two. And a creep tumor. Wow, dark. Dark, this is... It's adding up. It's becoming significant here. As That is too much damage for the easily anticipated oracles to get. Seven drones is three or four more than you can really afford in the early game. Oh, Dark, I'm sure we'll find a way. Twilight and Forge to follow things up. Looking like a very typical hero build here. Especially if you see Blink and Plus One. This is the build he popularized uh, over the last year or so. Kind of letting Protoss know they don't have to go straight to... Ah! Well, uh, let me hold that thought for a moment. As he decides on the charge, always important to have options. And this time, it, it looks like Hero wants to put on some follow-up aggression. Oracle dies pretty much for free. The Queen's driving them into the corner. Adepts, a whole bunch of them shade in, but Dark has more than enough Zerglings to repel. Gonna warp it a couple of, I think he he knows about the OV and is trying to sell the blink follow-up. I'm wondering what the intent is of going charged with this much gas. He he's been mining the gases at his natural. Maybe a quicker Templar archives? Oh my okay, the stasis. The Oracle died, which stopped the stasis. 
There we are. Player's been really trying Storm lately. He shows four stalkers. In fact, right now, Hero, despite having charged nearly finished, has zero zealots. So, really selling the blink here. I wonder if it's going to be a storm rush, or are we just going to see Archons right off the bat? As storm can be incredibly effective against the huge amounts of Roach, Zergling, and Baneling. But is much more of a reach than just going to blink in that base setup. Templar Archives is done. A lot of gas in the bank for Hero. Warps in for Templar. And immediately makes the Archons alongside this Robo. I like it. Adding in a Phoenix in for a little later game. A attempt at denying scouting. Always good to have. I think one Phoenix can always justify itself. Also remember Dark's signature move. Of course, he has a lot of... One of his signature moves in phase one of the fight. Uh, is the Nidus Swarm Host play. So, a Phoenix to have something to shut down. Ooh, nice positioning there on everything. Very stats-esque defense so far. Stats been a little quiet lately. Haven't seen him signing up for too much stuff. Come on, stats, come back to us. As much as I love Hero, Protoss could use a little more representation out there. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. Hero is switching into ma- It isn't just one Phoenix. It's... A bunch of them. Like, he's switching into Mass Phoenix. Which is kind of crazy. I... What are you doing? It's not carriers. He has no fleet beacon. It is a Sky Toss... Edition. But instead of carriers, phoenixes instead, which can serve much of the same purpose, though uh, a bit more fragile and a lot more micro-intensive. The fourth base is well locked down. By the way, Dark has just been chilling. He's got 83 drones, five bases, uh, and a macro hatch. Going for Hive, Hydra upgrades, Lurker Den, there's the fleet beacon. Roaches and Lang still looking for an opportunity. The, the phoenixes will be revealed, and there's nothing to stop them here. There are hydras on the other side. Dark definitely surprised by the phoenix switch. He didn't really make any attempts to scout into the main. Lurker upgrades on the way. Lurker's still good when there's a ground army to deal with. Dark, probably the number one lurker player out there. Or as Cyril likes to call them, Lurk. Just Lurks. Get those Lurks with your Mutas. I can't believe, I've never heard anyone abbreviate them to Lurks. It's not like Lurkers is that long of a, there's only two syllables, but Lurks. Anyways, Lurks on the way. Mothership for Hero. Wait, for Fleet Beacon, for Mothership? Okay, Carrier's on the way. A, just adding on to the detection. We've, it's only 10 minutes in. Feels like we've been in this game for 20 with what the production tab looks like, but 18 more drones just finished. Dark going up towards 100 drones, though quickly trading them out for, for defenses speed of pretty much everything finishing. Mothership is halfway done. Carriers are arriving. The phoenixes have worked around the edges, kind of kept control of the situation, but not doing critical damage thus far. The adepts, I think this is partially hero. Hero just wants to get rid of them. Same with the zealots here. Freeing up supply for carriers. A little concerning if you're dark. Devil Spire on the way. Which, taking this very seriously, at some point you can no longer just go Hydras against Sky Toss. It just doesn't cut it, even if there is no storm. The Phoenix is not looking to challenge the Queens quite yet. 
I don't know about freeing up supplies. Hero's still at only 175. Dark has all of the monies. Chrono Boost and Carriers. Plus two air weapons on the way. Second Cyber Core. And Mama Ship has arrived. She will glide her way towards the front. The ground army looking fierce. The Phoenix is watching for wherever Dark moves to know if Hero can uh, back off or recall. Neural Parasite on the way. Mothership hanging out near the third. 17, 20 spore crawler, 21 spore crawlers. Simultaneously created by Dark. Flux veins. Wow, we just kind of skipped everything to the late game here. About as concisely as you can get there. Neural Parasite about to finish. Not even an infester yet. This is just thinking of the future for Dark, where maybe he ends up borrowing some of those Protoss units. All of the upgrades. He's going to do the Rube Gold Base machine here. Wait, how does... What was the Evo Chamber for, Dark? I, I don't even understand what I'm looking at there. Did he want to test it or something? Anyways, he's going to build the gold. I can't believe Dark's actually taking the gold. That's how you do that, by the way. You take down the rocks. The rocks take down the watchtower. Triple parasitic bomb will definitely soften up those phoenixes, though shouldn't kill them. Every fleet beacon upgrade. But now we see, can Dark actually compete with Heroes late game army? We've skipped all the way here. So many players struggle with this phase of the game. And that gold base was optimistic. But Dark is the ideal, the final boss. Yanks in a carrier, so many spores! Minus 400, or is it the, the stability he needs? The mothership can tank a lot of damage. She's a hefty one. But the spore crawlers are taking down the mama ship. The Hydra's not quite takes it down. Well, Dark is, I, I mean, the carriers are grinding through the spores. Unfortunately, spores don't have any sort of weapon upgrades. There's not even really a ground army here. I don't know where the ground army is. Still mostly chilling at home. Hero bringing it up. This could end very anticlimactically if the carriers just work their way through everything. There's no real detection. The lurkers are still underneath. Revelation is available. Use it on the army. Parasitic bomb dives on it with the corruptors in order to draw the interceptors into the parasitic bomb. There's a bunch of cry. It's a bit of a mess in here. Going back and forth. Lifts up some of the lurkers. The interceptors. Oh my god. Dark just wiped out the interceptors. Reset the count entirely. But the Archons come in with a vengeance. This fight just... It's slowing down because Dark wiped out the interceptors. He lowers the count. Flux Veins Void Rays coming up to join. And with them... Okay, so Dark is down to 140 supply and no minerals. He did a great job of wiping out the interceptors. That's how you do it. You essentially throw yourself onto the parasitic bomb so the interceptors are stuck close to the carriers. But Hero has so much to fall back on. It almost feels... It's check. It's not quite mate yet. But... Well, if anyone could come back from it, there's 2,000 gas in the bank. I don't know when Dark's going to pull out the Infestors, though yesterday might have been a better choice. We will see. Archons joining in. Plus three Carapace done. Really more focused on countering the ground army, which is probably a good move. Still very surprised to see such a lack of infestors out of dark. Carrier count back up to seven. He deflected the first wave. But... 
All right, revelation spotting again. Just slices through so many of the archons. The archons ah, working on the front line. Revelation looking good. And oh, the archon count has dwindled, but the carriers starting to deal with the lurkers here. Plus two, plus two, about to finish for the corruptors. Not that that's particularly relevant in this fight. 14 more hydras on the way, but it's not gonna be enough. Hero with the technical knockout will cleave through Dark's defenses, just slicing through, almost surgically dismantling him. And I'm a bit disappointed to see the lack of infestors. But Hero, on point this series. Hero showed up today, and he will take it to, to zero. Beautifully done. Thank you for watching. Thank you to the Korean StarCraft II League. Make sure to check that description for more information and to support. They're looking forward to a larger tournament in the summer as well, if the support keeps up. Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day a little bit better. Check out this video that Jimmy has put up there so generously. Boy, you've been doing pretty well lately. Uh, but thank you for watching. Good luck. Have fun. See you next time. Stay chill.